That. that is a missile tracking radar. Okay. We had a track target tracking radar and a tra target ranging radar. The target ranging radar was just for electronic countermeasures to supplement the target tracking radar. The, the two important ones is a missile tracking radar and the target tracking radar. And just as our name says, one was totally for tracking the missile and one was for tracking the target. What was different about them where the, the acquisition radar, they go round and round and round, right? They see everything that's flying. These two radars point like a finger. They, they start off, they point wherever you put them. And another very innovative thing about these radars is they could, once you lock them on a radar, they would, I mean a target, they would automatically stay with that target. Oh, that unless, so unless he flew below the horizon or turned and flew out of range, if you're locked on him, you're gonna stick with him. Wait, did you say that these actually rotate with it? Well, let me show you how they work. Come okay. over here. This is the console for the target tracking radar. Okay. The next door, they probably told you that when they decide a target is an enemy, they designate it. Did they tell you about that? They designate the target. He tells his operator to put his crosshairs, he has a hand wheel, over that target and designate it by pushing the button. That does two things. One is it sets off our designate light. We know we're having a target designated. Plus, when we hit the acquire button, in answer to that designate light, our radar will automatically slew. We get the direction and range from their radar. They can't give us elevation information because that radar cannot resolve elevation. But they can tell us the direction and they can and, and they can tell us the range. So we hit acquire and we get a big assist by having our radar automatically slew to those quadrants. The weak point of this is we only have about 40 seconds to lock on that target because it's flying at us at anywhere from from Mach uh, one and a half to Mach two. It's coming at us. We only have a range of 95 miles, yeah. so it wouldn't take very long for him to be too close to be a viable mission. Plus, he's flying in San Francisco, so if it gets past us, we're done anyway. So. What they did is they put three operators on this on this radar. This radar, this operator here, he's only responsible for raising the missile up and down in elevation. This guy is only responsible for moving the radar back and forth, in what we call azimuth. And this guy is only responsible for range. He has a little range gate that he moves out to where the target is. Okay, so I saw um, over there that the guy was controlling the actual missile going up and down right there. Is he? There's no one at that uh, that site over there. It's just all controlled right here. It's all the the, the radar is all controlled from here. The, the target tracking radar and the missile tracking radar is only controlled from the here. The missile itself is, is the all missile itself is not controlled from here. Oh, okay. That's only next door. All okay. we we just care about these two these two radars. Oh. We have to lock on the target and we have to lock on the missile before he can ever fire a missile. Who actually presses the launch button? The battery that? commander. Or if the battery commander can't for some reason, the launcher officer can. He can fire it actually from the launcher. The actual missile? Yeah. How, how long does it take for him to get away from the actual missile? How long does oh, everybody has to be down in the in the magazine before you... If, the, if you launch a missile with anybody up in that side that fence, okay. they're going to be dead. So you won't even find it. Okay. Is this so, why it's, it's very uh, very thick walls and bunkered down? It's yes. So we, yes. So when that, when that missile goes off, it's like an explosion. Yeah, no. That booster only burns for three and a half seconds, and it burns like an explosion. Right. It throws the missile up in the air, and in three and a half seconds, that missile's already going more than Mach 2. Wow. So these people in here have this, to actually endure. This you know. Well, remember, we weren't here in real life. Okay, okay. We were up on top of that mountain. Did you see where we were? No, no, no. When you walk out the door, if you look past the low-power radar up the top of the mountain, you'll see a, a bunch of foundations up there. You'll see one foundation that's way out, right at the edge of the mountain. That's where the missile tracking radar. It has to be a thousand meters from the missile before you launch the missile. Wow. Otherwise, remember this, this missile tracking radar is going to track the missile automatically as it goes up. You have to be far enough away to be within the slew rate. Otherwise, the missile's going to take off and just leave the missile tracking radar sitting yeah. there. And if the missile tracking radar loses lock with the missile for four seconds, the missile's going to blow. Okay. 
we won't let the missile fly around undirected with a, yeah. with a, with a warhead in it. So, we're locked on. We've locked on the missile, on the target. Interesting thing about locking on the target, the target knows he's being tracked. He's got sensors in his aircraft. He knows that a, that a, that a radar is actually tracking him. So he's going to start maneuvering unless he's an idiot. Over here, at the missile tracking radar, this guy has a lot easier job because he knows where his missiles are. He, I mean, he can see them out the window. We've already dialed the quadrants into the console. So all he has to do is the, the battery commander is going to designate a missile selection to him. These, the light's going to go on under the missile he wants. The missile he wants is going to be determined by the warhead because they're either going to have a 2 kiloton, a 20 kiloton, or a 40 kiloton weapon in them. So depending on, on the target severity, he's going to designate a missile. The missile tracking operator is going to acknowledge that designation, and this radar is going to automatically slew and lock on that missile. So now we're locked on the missile, we're locked on the target. All that information on the missile and the target is going to the intercept computer next door. The intercept computer is going to do some calculations. It's an analog computer and come up with a probable intercept point. Where's the best place to put the missile to intercept this target? That distance has to be within 200 seconds. Yeah. That's the parameters of the missile system. If it's within 200 seconds, the battery commander will get a ready firelight. He'll fire the missile, we'll get a firelight, immediately we'll get a launch light, because it's off. that just means it's off the rail and flying and we're going to be tracking the missile as it goes down range. The missile's going to fly up about 100,000 feet, tip over, and start diving on that intercept point. What's cool about this system is we're going to continue providing the, the uh, intercept computer with the maneuvering target information. The intercept computer is going to continue to target, uh, calculate the intercept point. That updated intercept point is going to be translated into turn commands for the missile, and we're going to send those turn commands back to the missile through the missile tracking radar. So we're actually going to maneuver the, the missile as the target maneuvers. The whole idea is to get that missile immediately in front, above the target, and a half second before we actually cross it, we're going to send it the burst command. The only way this missile can burst in a nuclear mode is with a burst command for the missile tracking radar. And then we're going to develop that wall of shock in front of the squadron of aircraft and yeah. hopefully take out the entire squadron. Yeah, hopefully. Are you the one that touches the button? Oh, no, 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 no. No. I was not a battery commander. No, but um, I mean, is this system here the one? No, no. next door. Next door. Next door. Okay. The, the fire command button is right next door. Okay. It can either be fired from that trailer or from the launch control trailer by the launch control officer. Okay. What's the computing power of uh, the radar system? The what? The computing power. The computing power? Like how fast it is uh, compared to our, our computers today? It would update 60 times, a, uh, 60 times a minute. Once every second. Okay. So it's not very fast. Can you open the computer? What's that? Can you show him the computer? Oh yeah. You want to see the computer? Yeah. It's, not, it's not in there. No, but, so this is a... Okay. Oh! He wants to see, see the technology. Oh, well. Okay. I thought that this is a computer. Oh, wow. Okay. There we go. This is the cat's ass of 1950s technology. Wow. <laughs> Vacuum tubes extreme. All 400 cycles. Six volt vacuum tubes. Wow. Much better under the nuclear explosion. <laughs> yeah. This system was designed to be mobile. We moved one once and never worked again. Well, I mean, it's, 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 well, can you well, can you imagine how susceptible it would be to con? These plug in. These are vacuum tubes. All you gotta do is shake them around a little bit, and you'll get four contacts. And once you once you got this thing working, the best thing to do is leave it the heck alone. What is calculated? This is the um, range gate cal range gate potentiometer. All this did here was put the range gate on the target tracking nice. display. So where is the computer? The next door, in the battery, in the, uh, come on over, show it to you. It's an L, huh? What was your job? I repaired all this. 
Oh, wow. I was I was a 23 N2 Papa, Knight Hercules tracking and uh, acquisition radar and repairman. That's just storage. So you know the ins and outs of everything. Oh yeah, I taught it. I taught it for two years before I got out. Okay. This is the interstellar computer in these four bays. When you when you move here.